do in person meetings. We haven't done a lot of these, and some of our meetings have been getting up to over uh, 100 or almost 100 people. So it's been great to see all of you guys. Typically invited this group today. Um, we were looking for those of you who've been serving on coalitions in multiple ways or in, in one coalition. We also have others who. I'm going to chair there and check in the back. Some of you may be either new to this work or have just started joining our community. I'm going to just hand it off to years of this work and have been oh maybe I should have more <laughs> that's how I don't know <laughs> um, which has been just refreshing to be able to work with them and then we also have Joanna Murray from the Rescue Children and Families uh, she's been a coach for us in our community of well-being work uh, they are funding a lot of this hence the food so thank you Rescue Children and Families Foundation for the food um, and thank you Travis for giving us that food we appreciate that and hosting us so I'm going to hand it off to Travis and that is do welcome introductions. Well, thanks everyone for coming. Uh, again, I apologize. Uh, we had, I think, the high end of what uh, of everyone that was invited. So not all of you were supposed to show up. <laughs> so this is our largest meeting space on campus. Um, so we're it's a, it's a little bit tight at times. But again, thank you for coming. And for me. Personally, I'm just I'm excited that there are that there are this many people that are that passionate about this. Um, I've been involved. Um, Denise asked me, I think it was October of 2019, to start um, learning about the 2030 vision. And I talked a little bit last month for those of you that were on the call about kind of my journey with that. When we started to just have the staff have just gathered so much data and then we have to turn that into information, um, organize ourselves in the team before we can get to a point where we can ask the community members to come around and get some feedback. So now that we've had the large group sessions, I think we've got the right partners at the table, we've had the right feedback, so we can really have this group to, to help us chart forward with, uh, with some of the So, Andy, any other comments or not? Um, maybe if we could get a chance, um, I know it's kind of a big group, but, um, if we could just get a chance to go around and do some introductions, just tell us you know, the name, where you're at, and, and if you'd like to share, and maybe some of that will come through with uh, where you work, but some of your passion for this work and what we hope to, uh, to accomplish for the table. So. Yeah. Right, I know. Oh, man. First time of the game. Oh, okay. um, <laughs> I'm Emily Newman, and I work for Unite Us, so we're an energy company, um, and we connect providers on a um, social determinants of health platform. Um, so, you guys, a lot of you probably heard from me. Um, so, my connection to this work is through state government. So, my background is in child protective services. Um, of court enforcement, Department of Labor. So I just remember being in the field a lot um, and not always hearing back from providers and clients that got connected to care. Um, so with our platform, you're able as providers to refer to each other electronically um, and then have that closed loop referral. So once a provider sends a referral and that um, receiving provider gets that referral, connects with the client, um, you as the sending um, provider get an email back saying that that um, other provider connected with that client. So you don't have to um, circle back with your client with that other provider. We're not saying lose touch with the providers that you work with, but you just don't have to um, continue to circle back. So it saves a lot of time and energy. Um, so we have a lot of providers um, in the front area on our platform, which is pretty exciting. So um, those missing puzzle pieces are now kind of working on the way back together. So that's my Uh, I'm Nadia Sadi, and um, my my real job is actually we 
we uh, do real estate development and property management. Um, and we also have a family foundation, a wrong family foundation that I run. Um, that's my, that's my real, as my husband says, the thing about it. Um, but I have been the chair for Buffalo County Community Partners for the last two years. And uh, my initial connection to Community Partners was as a concerned parent um, who uh, heard the voices of other, other parents and um, really just wanted to connect, uh, connect people with resources. And so I loved um, working with Community Partners. The staff is absolutely amazing. Denise is amazing. And um, just had the opportunity to meet people who are just passionate about making others' lives better. I'm Doug Kramer. <clears throat> Excuse me, I'm with the Buffalo County Attorney's Office. I just celebrated my 18th year there. <laughs> Makes me feel old. <laughs> um, the staff does all the work. I'm, I'm just there to look pretty and some days get worse and most days it doesn't. Um, I've been on the Positive Pressure Coalition, I would say 30 years, but that makes me even feel older. <laughs> Um, pretty close to when I first started. I remember meeting at Region 3 up there. Um, we started in the early 90s. Yeah. So back when I, I moved to Kearney in 91 and we started off as a child protective service worker with the state and also did adult protective services. So one morning we'd work with kids in the afternoon and set up services or at least refer families for their aging parents. So um, things have changed a lot in the 30 years I've lived in Kearney. And, Thought I'd be here two years and be gone, but you know, fortunately, I'm still here. And um, like to, I'm the administrator for juvenile services, which basically the title is I supervise the truancy and diversion staff. There are four of us total. Um, work with about 650 kids a year in three different programs. Um, sad that we need it, but it's good that we need it. So there's there to refer um, to different agencies. We started out getting $30,000 a year from the Crime Commission, and we're up to about $165,000. Half funds pass through the county to go to different service providers. So, um, which is interesting working with the Crime Commission and service providers. So, that, there's never the same thing each day, which is also very really nice. But, um, I also appreciate the staff at um, Health partners. Um, I'm also an health member, so I, I do some of the tips training for responsible beverage service. Um, just did the, the whole group out of the elk, so there's whole staff now is tips trained. And a few of the other establishments in Carney over the years. I think this is my 15th year doing that. Man, I'm really old. Um, so that's kind of what I've been doing in Carney. I'm Jessica Vickers um, with Livewell Counseling here in Kearney, and then we also have an office in Grand Island. Um, our work, obviously, I guess, is an area of mental health, um, but a big focus in our office is youth and families. Um, we have a school-based program where we contract with area schools. Um, Kearney Public is our largest school system that we contract with to provide uh, mental health services on site. And then, uh, I don't know, it's probably been about five years I've been working with Buffalo County Partners um, on some different coalitions. Um, again, with the, a lot of the focus being in youth mental health. Uh, hi, everybody. My name is Matt Morris. I'm the data coordinator with Community Partners. I think I know everybody in some capacity, or you probably get my emails. <laughs> um, but, uh, well, um, Sorry, I had the tuna and the jalapeno chips sandwich. <laughs> so I got a, a weird <laughs> flavor situation. Um, but I help with grant reports, timesheets, Excel surveys, um, forms, um, the occasional um, odd job around the office, stuff like that. But um, I'm going to pass it on to Wanda so I can drink some water. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Wanda Fedorczyk with Buffalo County Community Partners. I started in the substance abuse prevention coordinator role. I still wear that hat, but um, more recently in the last year and a half, I'm on the community response team as one of the central navigators. Um, so yeah, I, I oversee our positive pressure coalition and their work and the prevention strategies around substance abuse prevention. And then with community response, we help 
meet immediate needs of families in crisis working with local partners, Salvation Army, Jubilee Center, um, Community Action. Um, and Martha's my sidekick. <laughs> She's our bilingual navigator. So I'll turn it over to you. <laughs> Um, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Martha Martileño. I'm the wellness coordinator and also the bilingual social navigator. Um, I've been working at Buffalo County Community Partners for about two years. And I would say one of my passions is helping underserved and vulnerable populations, um, just helping them with a lot of the barriers that they're experiencing um, to try to access services and resources that they're eligible for. Um, one of the other things I was going to share is that um, part of the work that I also do is with um, food and nutrition, so making sure that we can enhance the access of fruit and vegetables to children and families. And um, one of those things is through the farmer's market, is being able to work with the Be Well Collaborative team um, so that they are able to accept SNAP at the farmer's market, but then also stretch their dollars to the Double Up Food Bucks program um, so that they can have more access to fruits and vegetables that are locally produced and fresh and healthy. <laughs> Hi. Okay. Um, I'm Josh Arias. Uh, I have been at Community Partners as the youth coordinator since 2016, and I've been there since I think 2014. I was trying to do the math. Um, I run the youth advisory board and I run the photo voice program. Um, what's the other question? What am I passionate about? I'm uh, passionate about youth work, um, art. Um, Art. I'm <laughs> uh, trying to get people to stop uh, buying anything that's meat on. Yeah, that's a little bit about me. You want to go? Or? Um, hi, I am Drew Thomas. I am now currently the executive assistant. Um, I was the administrative assistant. So um, I am very passionate about like mental health awareness and suicide prevention and stuff like that, which is why I got involved in this work. So I am Erin Small. I work for Carney Public Schools as a sixth month child care coach. Um, I'm at this table because I'm passionate about quality child care for our youngest community members. And also just that staff and providers are treated as professionals. My name is Becky Prano. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, my real job, as Nadia said, is working in marketing for Mayo Clinic. Um, not being Nebraska-based, I am here more as a community volunteer. I lead the community response team. Um, have worked in nonprofits here in the community for several years. That's how I got connected with that work. Um, my background is in public health and health communication. So um, as far as passions, I think I just have a passion about process <laughs> of doing all this work and kind of the, the results that it can bring and how people can come together to really make things happen. Uh, my background is in middle school teaching and um, administration. Um, but my, my passion or my lens that I look towards anything that I, that I work on is the equity and access for marginalized communities. Um, also, in collaboration with Dr. Warren, um, the, in the world, I work on uh, the little ones that brought Miami to Central Nebraska that connect communities and members to. I'm Tabby Richardson, I'm a family medicine and president position in the last year, emergency uh, care regarding the rural track of UNC. And for me, I think what uh, brought me here is I have two two big passions in my in my life and and kind of in in and out of my career, but one is kind of effort efforts against human trafficking is a huge passion in mind that I'm starting to try to um, look at how that I can get involved in that this local area. Um, I will be staying here and trying to practice other officials in the in June, so I'll be here all the term where I'm from. <clears throat> so I'd like to kind of get involved in that effort locally. I organized a community event in October, uh, which is just a, a walk to raise awareness against human trafficking and how to be good. Um, kind of turnout for that was excited. So we 
we're going to have to dig a little bit further to do more of that in that regard. And my second area of question would be again, kind of in the work of um, marginalized and under population um, and bilingual, and I worked for a period of time in one world in Omaha, which is a large sort of small thing also now serving mostly Latin immigrant population. And so it's kind of been a background of my um, historically in an interest of mine to kind of continue to serve that population and try to help improve their access and to quality health care. Um, as far as I don't think I'm going to a truly bilingual position in time. So I hope to try to reach that population. I think we have a lot of folks who seem to be able to speak in their preferred language to their health care providers, but I think might be a good question. I'm having a difference. Been involved with uh, both of my senior partners. Actually, I had students that were involved when I was teaching at my so way back. And then um, now I'm on both of my senior partners, um, executive board now, I guess, um, as vice president. And uh, I'm really, I got involved originally with both of my senior partners with my students. But anyway, um, mental health is a big concern of mine, of course, not only the students, but also the, the teachers in education, actually everywhere, but since education is my field, that's where I live. And then um, early childhood, I mean, I, I truly believe in everything, but also kind of community partners do, but I'm really trying in retirement to do narrow that a little bit because I kind of overextend myself. So those are the two that I'm really in. Uh, Actually, about right now, what are we to do to help it? Yeah, please jump down to Stan about this. Sorry, Michelle. What's up? There's one more behind you. Hello, Tana Miller, uh, behavioral health coordinator here at Community Partners. So I have been here for about eight years. Um, started out in the substance abuse prevention role and did a shift to more of the behavioral health side. Um, passions include behavioral health, um, suicide prevention, but I also have really grown um, an area in that early childhood piece. I think you heard Erin and Kathy both mention that too, and, and all the um, different pieces that go along with that. I think we're still learning as a community how it impacts everyone um, when we talk about our, our young kiddos and the care that they're provided. Um, in addition, I think it's really awesome to see all these people here with all these different passions and how we're all coming together. Um, really, for one common goal, it's really cool to see. And I think um, it affects probably all of our staff members, but hopefully the majority of you too. So thank you all for being here. Me next. <laughs> I'm Michelle Lauren. I'm a professor of Spanish at UNK and I have been working with BCCP since basically since Martha pulled us all together during the pandemic. And, um, you know, we started to learn about and worry about our neighbors who are not English speakers. Um, so that's been a big passion of mine. Uh, another passion is youth and suicide. I have a daughter who has been suicidal uh, over the last few years. And so that's that's a big thing for me too. If that's not overshine. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for sharing that with us. Krista Fritzen, and I am a professor at UNK in the undergraduate psychology department and a clinical psychologist, small private practice. I've been involved with both of my community partners probably about six years in a bit more active level, mostly the suicide prevention coalition and throughout prior to and then during the pandemic. And um, my hats are multiple. Um, UNK Beacon, the Behavioral Health Education Center in Nebraska. If you don't know what that is, I hope you will soon. Um, and I think that the mission is very workable within the mission of this organization, in fact, now, as well as UNK and UNK Psychology, and um, also <coughs> survivors with the Center of Nebraska. It's an amazing kind of uh, some awareness we need to that. And bring that in, I hope. The other thing, I guess, my passion, my commitment is I'm a Carneyite. I grew up here and I grew up on the South Side of Carney. Um, <laughs> and uh, fortunately, I was in a home where I was empowered as a kind of 
right. as a power to, you know, um, within that level of dysfunction of every family, by on a, a more helpful end than some, less than others, but as in an environment that promoted I could do anything I wanted, and when people were telling me I couldn't, I remember that voice a lot stronger. And I want to be a person, I want to be that voice that says you can, with research that you chose, you know, it's that one voice sometimes. Mm -hmm. um, so my passion is for the community. Um, I have several um, friends growing up that I'm so connected to that were in less than helpful situations. And uh, from multiple sections, underserved, et cetera, in my local area. And um, so it's in my heart, and I want to help serve, and, and I appreciate it. And I think it's part of this. <clears throat> My name is Lisa Leaf. I am the case manager at Salvation Army. I started about four years ago. I was just going to do Christmas work. <laughs> <laughs> um, I have a lot for folks, and I am probably the first one who met some people who need to call you. So thank you all for everything you do because I refer people to you and I'm I'm always trying to get in somewhere where I'm going to learn more about where I can help people, where I can send them, what kind of things I can, um, you know, send them to so they can give up. Um, I'm passionate about pretty much all of it. <laughs> and I wear a lot of hats as well. Um, but uh, I appreciate the opportunity to be here. Um, I'm also kind of a, a doer, so it's Wonderful to hear you guys high level stuff, but I'm I'm like, okay, let's let's do this. Let's let's, you know, <laughs> how can we transfer this to everyday things that can make get things better? So uh, you guys are great up here and I love that too, but I'm like, okay, so, hey, <laughs> you know? so that's me. <laughs> Hi everybody, I'm uh, Diane Duncan. I'm a professor of science at UNK. And First work with community partners. That's why it was done. And maybe 18 years ago or so, when the, the GAB used to do a legislative lobbying day, and I was recruited to do some training for them to help them figure out how to be better advocates on the issues that they cared about. And then that led to a position on the Planning and Measurement Committee. Back when we could smell the air. Well, because then the kids said, well, we're going to tobacco. Yeah. And, and and um, texting and driving and and yeah, a whole bunch of different things. Yeah, uh, currently I'm on board. I uh, chair the planning and measurement committee. And you know, I guess my my personal connection to the work is I'm a social scientist, so all of these issues are interesting to me. You know, um, but I'm also a political scientist, so I care about community. And so much of, of my, my my academic work is built around how do we make communities function in ways that, in, that are inclusive and help everyone like live their best life. Okay. So the fact that community is in the title of, of this organization you know, says a lot to me about my, my connections to the work. Hi, I'm Megan Andrews. I'm the senior director for Boyd County Central Nebraska. So I oversee an array of services with offices uh, outside of Columbus, Grand Island County, and North Platte. Um, I've been a course now for 14 years. I started um, first at a college or at our youth shelter in Grand Island, and I just really fell in love with that juvenile justice population, and I kind of worked my way around with some different services after that. Um, I have not been super involved with Buffalo County Community Partners, but I'm from Grand Island originally. I've lived in Carney for 10 years, so I've kind of kept a foot in both counties, um, and I do sit on the board of the Fall County Community Collaborative, which is the backbone collaborative for the practice of the family foundation. Um, as far as my passion, um, like I said, that juvenile justice population, but I also like finding ways to get to families and kiddos earlier um, and trying to keep them out of the system. Hi, I'm Abby Olson. I'm the director of peer management and social work at Good Parents Hospital. I've been there for 15 years. My background is in social work, so that um, in itself tells you that I have lots of Hopefully. Um, I also, my second job is I'm an adjunct professor at UNK. I teach a, a, a night class there in social work. So I love to be part of educating others and coaching others. Um, I would say that 
Um, I am interested in all, every single thing that each one of you said. So <laughs> it, that's kind of a problem sometimes. <laughs> um, <laughs> I, um, my, my master's is in clinical social work, so mental health is really important to me, but I didn't go the therapy route. Um, I worked in the schools at that time for practicum. I love working with kids. To be honest, I don't love working with parents. Um, and so I was uh, stuck in health care. Um, I really love working with um, our older adult population as well. There are, just like you said, there are so many people out there that are vulnerable, and um, there were a lot of vulnerabilities before um, the pandemic, and now they've just exacerbated. Um, and those of us that have decent coping skills are struggling with, with that as well. So um, I love the process of this as well. I really want to be part of something bigger. I think that uh, the one thing I have was voice, and we need to use it when we're able to, and it's so much better when we can work together. And, this gives, um, gives me an opportunity to step outside of the world that I work in um, because we're all so interconnected. And I think we've realized that this last year or two that we really are all in, interdependent on each other. So I am very happy to be here. Hi, everyone. My name is Sarah Malski. I am a social worker here at Carney Regional. I'm also working on my master's program right now um, with Abby over at Coach Sam. So I've been a social worker for about 10 years. I recently relocated back to the community. I'm from around here, um, but a lot has changed in the past 10 years. So I'm kind of um, getting familiar with what resources are available in areas of need. And um, I'm excited to kind of move forward with um, kind of gaining some of those connections with the uh, resources that are available and seeing what we can do to kind of make changes for their needs. Um, I'm Jamie Legates. I work at Family Care, and there I am a certified family care support specialist and the assistant executive director. Um, we do a lot of work around um, family care support, so I love working with them. Um, <laughs> I'm like, <laughs> um, and really, the uh, care support is about, is about an equal relationship that, that grows. Um, skills and recovery and wellness and just lasting. And so that's a big part of, of my passion in this work is to, um, in a relatable way, their families be able to share that with them. Um, I also have a big, uh, big stake in helping people with lived experience and, and families that have worked in these systems have a voice in um, creating the system and, and making change in the system and that's a really important part for those for me too. So thank you. Well have it happen. Um, <laughs> uh, my name is Matt Lemeyer and I am new to the community. Um, this is my ninth week here. Uh, and uh, I am the new director of mission integration for Good Samaritan in St. Francis in uh, Grand Island and then one of our first access hospitals way out in Plainview, which I never seem to be able to get to. Um, and uh, what that means, we're, we're Catholic system larger, uh, and my job is to help us uh, maintain and reconnect your Catholic identity with that community for how we deliver care. And uh, this is a big part of what that should mean because when the sisters founded the hospital ministries that they founded across the state and the rest of the country, they would come and they would meet with people in the community and ask what they needed. It would come with a prescription. Um, so there was a, their, their whole way of doing things was about listening and responding to me. And not, um, you know, I think that's something that we need to be free. Uh, and this is a great example of that. Um, my previous, I, I've worked in this kind of field for about a dozen years. I took a little break uh, for the last. Um, Four or five years and was running a nonprofit in Texas that um, <laughs> provides uh, legal services for asylum seekers and undocumented people in the community. And unfortunately, we got hit by the pandemic financially and couldn't survive. So, um, so, but that changed the trajectory again. And now here I am. My background is I, my wife and I met in divinity school. And so we are uh, in, I would call it community ministry. My passion can be summarized just with the social determinants because um, I think that covers everything. Uh, and 
that's uh, yeah, gives us a, a good um, place to start. So that's what we share. Well, Denise, we have eaten, we're well fed, we <laughs> have introduced each other, there's a lot of passion going on here, so I think we're ready yeah. for you to lead us. All right, I'm going to do just a little housekeeping. I'm going to pass these bags around so you can drop in your boxes. Let me get small first, so I'm trying to find the things without my delay. So just I have a couple of things. Like I say today, I think it is clunky because they're new to me. I just ask for your patience as I kind of try to work through different language and words that we're hopefully going to start using more frequently as we're working together. Um, I also ask, I'm going to be asking some questions, but since I the set up the room, I'm over here, I don't want you to talk to me, so I'm granting you permission to talk to each other, so even though I'm asking the questions, you sure do not need to direct the answers to me, feel free to, to, to talk amongst yourself with your, those answers, and I will do my best to facilitate um, how, we, how we go about those answers. My passion is your passion. I, you know, I, I listen to the work that you're doing, and I'm so excited about um, the group that we have together uh, around the table today. And I think that really helps us kind of start this conversation. You guys are doing great work. You're experts in your field. What is it that connects all of us? If we were truly going to make the greatest impact in our community, what unites us all? What is that thread that connects all of us together? That if we were to continue to pull on that thread, strengthen that thread, weave that thread stronger, where would that thread be? That's the purpose of today's meeting, the purpose of bringing you all together. We felt this conversation needed to be a small group, and this, I think, is as small as Buffalo County Community Partners can get. <laughs> I'm just going to admit, we try. Um, and you guys, I, I mentioned earlier, you were invited for a purpose. Um, you're either representing a coalition, you're either new to this work, we try to get as many different fingers of different issue areas and hopefully we can achieve that because I think all of you talked about different passions and some similar passions. We also have some doers in the community and we also heard many of you with these visions that were like, oh wow, aspiring ideas that you've been sharing and some of you are very strategic. So we, we really did, Natty and I looked through the list, we tried to make those connections, and that is why we invited you to this, this conversation with this overall goal. I'm going to do a real quick, just where did we leave off last time, and then we're going to ask some questions. So Natty handed out quite a few materials. I'm going to start with this piece, just to refresh us from November. I know it seems like just yesterday, but it, it, it but sometimes it gets a little rusty. I sometimes get a little rusty. I'm not seeing the rest of you are. So Buffalo County Community Partners is very willing to serve as the backbone to this work. What does that mean? That means we're willing to host these conversations, but we're really looking to the community to lead this work. I think many of the staff and board members have said we have done amazing work in this community, but the structure we have today has some limitations to it. The staff is at max. We can only do so much <laughs> that we're doing right now. How do we leverage our time to support the work in the community to create that greater impact? So that, that's kind of one of the areas that we, we've been talking about. We're willing to be that backbone of those conversations and to provide that staff support. The collective goal that the board set in front of us uh, moving forward was to advance innovative solutions. So we really want to be innovative two complex social issues and boy do we know that our lives today are much more complex than they ever have been in, in history our community vision you guys i think everyone in this room has either been to a board meeting or to one of the community uh, meetings and you've helped us refine this community vision i can sum it up in just a few short words resources access coordinated services and people are valued so if you read those four sentences, resources are easy to understand and accessible for all. Resources is key to our future. Residents have access to basic services. Families thrive when partners work together or services are coordinated. 
I still see Lisa crying every time I say that because <laughs> she, she has seen the true coordination to help people. And people are valued and their voices inform the work. And I think of Michelle and Chandra when you know those voices in our community were definitely lifted up that were through the pandemic did not have a voice and they needed to be heard. So those are the four pillars that we've really been talking about as a community. We're hoping that that vision can can um, unite us, that those are lenses we can look through. And then we begin to ask ourselves, now what? They sound great, they look great, but what next, right? We put on the left-hand <clears throat> side innovative solutions that we know work and have worked in the past. So collective impact, results-based accountability, evidence-based practices, promising practices, best practices, those are things we know that work in our community. We did put out there the collective impact model. I think you guys have seen that frequently. Um, raise your hand if you want Travis to do one more commercial. He's done it really well for the last few months. Anybody want a quick collective impact commercial? I've either done a really good job or you're sick of me talking. So <laughs> we are truly working towards collective impact, right, Travis? Yes. Uh, Results-based accountability, the other fairly heavy packet that we gave you, I think I'm out of them already. We gave you the full packet today. Diane is our expert in sharing that as well as Joanna on the phone. And Diane's very willing to give a quick commercial on this as well. Just maybe raise your hand if you want a little refresher on, we can count things. We also need to know how we truly achieving our task. And I think that's on page, Wait, I'm close. Gosh darn it. We've done a few of these. So if you look at those top boxes, you can count the number of food boxes we give out to the community. How well did we do it? We emptied every one of those darn trucks and made sure everybody had it, had food. We did that really well. Is anybody self-sufficient in food today? Did we prove that? Did we set ourselves up for success and true impact to achieve food security for 1,500 people that we fed every day through or every week through the pandemic? Yeah. That is that's the hard work, right? How do we get there? Okay. Results-based accountability. Those are the two models that we have put in front of you to consider in uh, moving forward with this work. Complex social issues. Every one of you serve on a coalition. You can point to behavioral health. You can tell me what you did. You can count numbers. You can say how well you did it. You nail those top two boxes and that results based accountability over and over and over again. We were successful. We have a few pockets of that impact that we can measure in any one of those complex social issues. They've all been addressed individually to some degree. We've done great work in that area. All right, next page is just a little bit more in depth of those four pillars and those indicators. And now we're going to start asking some questions. Maybe. How can this work continue? to achieve the greatest impact. And this is just a brainstorming session. Um, since it's a full room, I ask you to be somewhat brief so that we can hear from many. We'll take maybe the next um, 10 minutes and just kind of talk about that. Just ideas you might have. We're doing great work. How can we enhance the model that you are familiar with that has been the model of Buckland County Community Partners? New ideas from other communities that you may know of to achieve greater impact in the community. Yes, Josh. I would say we keep asking, do we have everybody at the table? Like as, as often as we can. Uh, I think that's like I think that's like one main step. Uh, but yeah. We need that lived experience at the table as well, right? Yeah. Can I piggyback on that and say something that I can't? <laughs> <laughs> Nope. Something that's come up, you know, in our recent meetings, I guess, with, with Martha and Matt, um, is it's not just our non-English speaking, Spanish speaking neighbors, but how do we address uh, people who are like Somali or, you know, other, other 
cultures that are not necessarily getting the the help that they need. And I would like for us to, to extend our, our outreach to that, you know. Just identifying like service gaps in the field, you know, those are and ways to maybe figure out who those providers are that can address those needs. It's definitely a conversation about that as well. Reluctant because I do, I don't know who's, who's not here that would normally be here, but I didn't hear anybody who represents unions of faith, pastors, or any other saying someone saying that's who they represent. And I will mention too, there is a group of 100 other people um, that have been meeting, so there may not actually be sitting here, but um, there are other people that are very best in this conversation as well. I wanted to add when we think about systemic changes and we talk about you know, whose voices are not at the table. Um, I'm also thinking about those systems that where we're finding barriers, like how do we engage them so that the systems can change? If possible. Just within that data that you collect and those systems to identify those barriers, you can start to solve some of those challenges, yes. So here's the experience, making sure that we have a well-rounded representation of everything being on the table. That um, doing some type of assessment of gaps and barriers to better understand our community could truly create greater impact. Other ideas? I'm I'm involved in work statewide. Um, through some of the programs that we do. And on several of the different committees and what they're doing on this, they're talking a lot about those experience and people's lived experience and meeting people with tables and things like that. And on Monday, I was part of a group, um, I think Children and Families was there, CFS was there, lots of different people um, working on some statewide transformation of the system. And a couple of peers were there. And I consider myself a peer. I bring my story, my family story, along with all the families that I've worked with to the table to be able to share that experience with the people that we work with. But this, this peer said um, she had been part of this group full time and we were looking at the different initiatives and she said, I can guarantee you when I sit back to a table of peers, your priorities will not be their priorities and they won't look the same. And it was like the first time they had heard that, that um, if we don't, if we don't bring in that lived experience from the beginning, and instead of listening to what they have to say, listening to our experiences and, and how it's worked for us, and then taking that back to our professional tables that fix the system, and then bring it back to another program, until we bring them into that table and say, how can we, how can this work better for you now? Let's design what this looks like. We can't make a deal uh, last the impact, and so. That, that's a voice that's missing at all of these tables, I think, is that lived experience. Someone who's been in it and who wants to do the work to move it forward. I want to take that off that. And then also, so like this kind of model meeting over lunch may not work for people who are impacted people. And so we have to be on the forefront of saying, okay, maybe there's an evening crew that, and maybe we go out to homes, and I know I'm kind of pushing the envelope here. But our traditional middle class norms, we have to disrupt those to really, you know, reach marginalized communities. And I hear what you're saying, and you're right in line of what we're wanting to hear, because what we're asking all of you is to be in that balcony with us, right? Um, this group itself may not be the people who make that happen. We have some influence, right? Uh, but we're really looking for those threads that really help us look to what we need to do different structurally to support that work moving forward. These are very important things to share. So thank you for sharing that, Dean. I just, I wanted to say that I didn't want you to all feel like you're responsible for that piece, but we want to make sure that we're really thinking about being in that balcony. What are we all seeing? If we, if we could truly make an impact, what would that be or how might that be happen? No, that's okay. I also think kind of along that same line, kind of connecting the dots between those two as we're setting those systems in place, 
and trying to impact system structures that meet the needs of the people, we have to make sure that the systems that we have in place are adaptable. So when we see the changes in needs, we can at the same speed change how we're doing things to, to meet those needs instead of, you know, by the time we get something <laughs> together to, to really address what's happening, uh, you know, they've, they've been sitting with that need for too long. So just as we're kind of, talking about that process, just making sure that we're considering that our, our ability to adapt to those changes. And to add to that, the capacity to be able to provide whatever is needed. I think we can put, we have great ideas, but if we don't have capacity, people, resources to provide it, uh, somebody's gonna be waiting. I think a central, they can go to one place like sometimes they have too many voices around them that they don't know what to do. Yeah, and we don't talk to each other the best either if we're helping someone. Mm -hmm. So sometimes those resources are either overused, you know, when it could be um, balanced a little bit. You know, and I don't think it's definitely not intentional. It's just everybody right. working in front of them. The only other comment would be obviously. If um, not only with different cultures and, and different languages, but there still are many people out there in the world that have a different literacy level and understanding. And I think that's something that we don't always address. We talk about that in healthcare, about health, health literacy and understanding what, you know, how we're speaking and what's communicating. And I think that's still a huge need. And I don't know if there's data out there about that, but, um, and then obviously we serve a big rural area as well. Um, and I think that we have to just meet the, the, their needs in the county as well. I think along with that is building the capacity in the rural community so that way they can advocate for what their community um, what they see instead of us going to them saying historically that's what we've done and it doesn't quite work that way. So building those champions within each community. I'm going to kind of segue. Oh, sorry, was there someone else? I was just going to mention from a provider perspective, um, just an easy way to track the data for the work that's being done in communities, because I think a lot of the time that's really time consuming for providers, but it's really necessary for funding purposes and budget purposes. And at the end of the day, being able to share that information out. You're naming so many of those very important elements to go through. It's really it's all of these the pieces to keep moving forward with the next of these impacts. So it's just reaffirming that we're on the right track. So the question I think that um that I have as an executive director of the community partners, and I think the board, um, we've been meeting as coalitions for 23 odd years. We've made significant impact. We've put all, almost all the coalitions on pause. We see some duplicated conversations. We see some of you at multiple tables in the coalition, um, maybe even saying the same thing at each of those coalition meetings. As we begin to think about what that structure looks like in 2022, how can we do that better? Um, we wanted to have this conversation before we all um, start the new year and say, okay, here's the next um, 10 meeting times for all the coalitions, because we, we feel like we, we, we're making progress, but what might that future look like for you um, in the community? How could you see this peer support being at the table? How could we bring in more of those coordinated services? How could we have a centralized data collection where people and organizations are bringing data to, to help share that picture? And communication is efficient and um, easy to access. Really challenging me on this question because I don't have the answer, but I don't know that I'm ready to go back to where we left. Really open to your ideas and thoughts. And maybe with that same question, 
What is the one thing that we're all hoping to achieve together? What is that one thread that unites us all? Because we can't be it all, right? I shouldn't say unites us all. What, does, what do all the people in our community have in common? So if we were focused in one area, we would yeah. have a greater impact. Thriving family, thriving community. So yeah. talk to me a little bit more about that. What, <laughs> Thriving families is, is a big piece, right? Yeah, yeah. everybody is basically seeing that yeah. easily, kindly, providers being connected to each other easily, kindly. That coordinated <laughs> coordinate <laughs> care network easily, kindly. Something I've learned enormously from Martha is um, just the connections. Um, Martha, I don't know, you know, if you want to speak to this, but the fact that she has put so many of us in touch with each other for, uh, you know, resources. So I, I guess I don't know what I'm, what I'm exactly saying. What is my one thread of, of, of communication from this? Um, yeah, I feel communication, like unity. Yep, just bringing people together to the table to discuss some of those issues that we're seeing. Um, mm -hmm. You know, trying to view people holistically and, and what help that they're needing and trying to create those connections with maybe like someone who has a resource or who has a project that could help benefit. Um, you know, I think we had um, brought uh, Rusty McCullough um, yeah. into the diversity and inclusion collaborative group. And from that, they were able to write a, a grant that was fairly large to help um, some of the families. Um, five million dollars, yeah, yeah, pretty big. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and then just working with the Two Rivers Public Health Department as well to help minority um, populations too. And so I think is that kind of where you're getting at? Well, well, I guess you know the idea that that Martha has done like just such an astounding job in connecting our mm -hmm. non-English speaking, particularly I guess our non-English speaking neighbors mm -hmm. together. And those of us that are advocates for that. Thank you. And I admire her so much for that. Thank you. We have spent some time talking about that. Um, some of you may have um, seen a coalition operate in identifying a problem statement, building a, a work plan, everybody dividing up that work plan, and moving that forward. And a lot of that's grant based, right? We've spent some time talking about maybe um, what we're moving forward into the new year is more of uh, facilitated conversations, where we know what those um, <coughs> topics are or what people are most interested in the community, um, what those passions are. Um, if there's three or four that we could really keep uh, a focus on, and the staff spends a lot more of their time making connections with amongst all of you, we have given that some, some consideration. A little bit of a change from what we've done in the past. I also think this might come off as an unpopular opinion as I'm putting words around it, but I don't know, I don't know that everybody needs to be at every table. And I think we've had that, we've had that discussion a lot with community response. I remember it with Healthy Minds, um, you know, do the doers, do they want to spend an hour a month at the meetings where it's up here with more of a strategy? Do the strategy people have a lot, you know, that they can hands-on help the doers with some of that I think is kind of the work is naturally stratified and I don't know that our conversations are always stratified in the same way as the work if that makes sense so I do think we need everybody's voice um but I think as far as you know community conversations coalitions and whatnot I think there are probably more efficient ways to do it where we have the right people at the right tables and have that information communicated across tables um, so that you don't have people that are on six different coalitions saying the same thing, you know, that type of thing where it's just a little bit more um, strategic as far as who's where, but then obviously, you know, making sure that those things are connected so that the voices are heard across the board. If that makes sense. And the only thing about that is you have to make sure that the frontline folks know what happens. Because yes. there's been something just recently where I don't know anything about it. And then the person talking to the next person. <laughs> so yeah, and then even I mean, and one step further than that, the voices of the people that are being served by those services. But yeah. you know, we've talked a lot about different priorities. Those people, it's it's not going to be their priority to be here at our new lunch meeting. They have other things that are higher priorities for them. So 
again, just kind of, yeah, connecting those is the hardest part for sure. So what, about, what are some of your thoughts about that common thread? Is there a common thread for these two elements? And what could that common thread be? Sorry. Uh, I'm going to turn it I don't know if this is what the common thread or not, but in the years that I've been listening to people, and I really have tried to be the listener, so I have to really train myself to do that because I'm kind of like this. <laughs> okay. But anyway, so the one word that I've heard over and over and over and over for years now is access. Whether that's access to housing, access to services, access to transportation, access to somebody who can speak my language, whatever it is. Is so I'm just throwing that out there. As a, and the other one that I keep hearing again over and over and over again is um, coordination and connection. I kind of put those two words together. Whether, and again, <clears throat> whether it's <clears throat> coordination services in a database or whatever, or coordinate the connection so you can all meet whoever you need to meet with to or talk to or whatever. It just seems like those are two things <clears throat> that come up constantly. Uh, it doesn't matter whether you're on um, Be Well or Healthy Minds or whatever, every time I hear one of them, I just hear those two things over and over and over again. So I'm just kind of, I don't know if that leads anywhere. It That's good. helpful to get it started. Right. Yeah. 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 That's the two things I see all the time. Nadia, I'm curious, because you sit on a lot of these, what your thoughts are. Well, actually, I was just gonna ask a question though. <laughs> <laughs> Not to put you on the spot. No, no, you're fine. Right. You no, know. I was gonna ask the question just to continue Denise's question. Mm -hmm. I mean, you, you all sit on a lot of these coalitions, but you all sit on a lot of other things too, and everybody here is very forward thinking. So, you know, what could what way of doing this work could be more impactful? You know, if we hear that repetition time and time again of um, access. What, what is our access point? What is our coordination point? If I needed food or I needed housing, where do I go? You know, what is that, that commonality that you approach the issue with that makes it more impactful? So, I mean, I'm sure you've all had those, those thoughts and or reflections either on those, at those coalition tables or other tables to say, wow, if we could do this, that would really make a difference. We wouldn't continue just putting out fires. Mm -hmm. And I realize there's a lot of little pieces, you know, Lisa, you had a lot of little pieces, great ideas, but what, what's the big piece that ties that all together? What's the, what's the opportunity? You know, how do you connect people and how do you coordinate people? No, but I'm just going to mention, I think I don't have the answer to that, but uh, that's what's terrible for me to do as a physician. I have a lot of times I'll have patients that need services or particularly, you know, like bench feeding patients or whatever, and I, I probably need to educate myself better on what's available to them, but I don't really always know where to send them or re community resources, things like you know, helping them with figuring out if they're eligible for Medicaid or different services available in the community. And so, you know, answer the question that the, the cause thanks for me is how do we connect them? And we no longer have a social worker in our clinic anymore. Or one that I now used to have one, but I don't anymore. And so I don't have the access to that. And I don't have the time to start calling all the community agencies. You know, I don't have time either in my clinic day. So yeah, I just want to have a central place, or I want a central place to like send patients where I know there's someone in my language to talk to them, where I know that they can. Have like assistance with healthcare or assistance with um, do you have my health insurance? Like that? I just got okay. Yeah. I was going to say, I mean, we've been we're we're working, working very closely so with, not. I mean, yeah. not just working closely with, we brought my link to San Francisco. And our hope is that it is a source to give yeah. our clients, our, our friends, and, and you know. Colleagues, a source for. So, should I have patients utilize my link then? Yes. Is there a Spanish version of all of It's It's in four languages. Okay. We have Vietnamese, Spanish, uh, English, and 
and the paragraph, yes. Awesome. Right. Well, I'm just right where you're using that, and I would love it if it was this fast. Sure. Yeah. So, along with just that conversation, <laughs> the other thing is, is that, you know, I know everybody here is very educated and would be great if we knew everything, right? But that's that's the other issue is that you can't know everything and you can't solve everything and you can't be everything to everybody that is in your in your circle and so then along those lines what is that thread that commonality that would allow us to i don't want to say defer because we, we want to be able to but know that there is something available um these resources the work that is done is is woven you know it's not just here's access to it it's woven into that common piece that we have yet to identify and dr diaz do you want to speak at all to that about my mic and our, our work that we've been doing on that or oh go ahead but i want to just mind if i just pause them for a little sorry bit. and then we can yes. maybe connect you guys offline on that because the other thing i'm going to build on what Danny's saying and let's come back to you chandra Let's uh, go back to that peer support, that lived experience. How does how do we impact that person? So what you guys are talking about today, you're talking about access, you're talking about coordination, things that we can do in this room. But literally, what impact are we hoping to achieve for that individual? I think I think sustainability is a very key value in this because if we don't do all the things we're talking about, if we don't coordinate, then the resources cannot continue to be sustained. The experts leave the field. And then you're learning again. And so I think we have to find a way, like the one part of the issue is, is that we all are here and we consider our experts, but we all go about our work very differently and how we approach things. And I don't understand certain processes that maybe you have to go through. And so I think there needs to be kind of like a just almost like an education for professionals as well. Like this is what we currently have. And the other problem. Um, I'm getting into problems, but the other issue is, is then when you do think you're doing what's best for that person in that moment and you're referring, unless that person comes back for your services, you don't know if it was successful. And that's the challenge because then you might be referring the next three people down that route. And unless you get it blank or see them in your emergency room in your clinic, but you just don't know what is, you don't know if the resources and the support are successful. And, if they are even fun for you. So this comes back to I think what you originally said is that very clear communication about what's available yeah. and then what yeah. And I think whatever process is between whatever this, you know, our thinking, we have to think of sustainability because we continue to focus on fighting fire and the crisis all the time. And I think that's what we come up with. But Abby, can we come and give your staff a, a session on my link? I mean, yes, but there, there's more than my link as well. And I think that's the issue is that one of the positive things about our county and our community is that we do have decent resources. It's just continually changing. And so it's hard for professionals to always continue to keep up even when you are not able to be at the coalition table at the lunch hour. You know, what you said there too about the sustained piece, can we unpack that a little bit? Because I also heard Aaron say by the end. Yes. And I, I think that nugget's in there a little bit. I just want us to keep unpacking that a little yeah. bit. What is that impact that we're looking at that we really want to achieve? Because we can do this. Yeah. And I agree. And we have where it's going. going. When she said the thriving, like we're in survival mode versus thriving. And the key word for me, and then I'll move on, is everything I've heard for the how many years I've lived here is around the word healthy. What do we define as healthy for each one of the areas that we work with, each population? Well, and this, this is on the professional level, but then you, you go back down to yeah. a person seeking services. I know that there are lots of little access places where they can go and get all mm -hmm. lots of resources, right? You have Pivotal, the Selfish Army, you have lots of places within the rest of that. Um, us, we do that too, but you don't know what you need until so you, someone says, hey, maybe this is what you need, you know what I mean? And so, like, not knowing where to go for something that I need, not knowing that there's someone that wants to meet that need, then I don't even go back down farther to say, where do I start? Then it's overwhelming. Yeah. yeah. It's like you need a tour guide. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And one location. 
We just yeah. we go here, talk to your right, customer right. guy, yeah. and then we connect out of pocket money and you want to answer. There's one, <laughs> one thing, oh, oh, I was just going to say, there's one thing we're thinking about, and I'm just going to throw it out here in the middle of the room for you guys to either shoot holes in or to say, oh, yes, that's it. Um, it is jobs. So when we think about sustainability, we're thinking employment. We're thinking if you're employed and you're sustained in employment, you're able to have the funds to meet the needs that you have in the community. So we have thrown that out a little bit. If we're truly going to sustain the work that we're doing, does that touch all of the work that you're passionate about? And how does that touch? We're just looking for that thread that unites us all. And by working, I mean, that's a really, really broad sense of the word, you know, because for what is it that you do? You know, we asked you to share, what do you do or what is your passion? You know, what is it that brings you fulfillment? And probably in the process of those things is how your needs are met. I'm just going to throw out an example because I think we've talked about this and I've been waiting for Erin to throw it out so maybe she can piggyback on it because you heard Erin say when she introduced herself that one of her passions was early childhood but also the workforce of providers so that they view themselves as professionals. So our early childhood providers, I would, I would say is in a crisis level as far as they're working long hours, they're stressful hours. If they are impacted by the pandemic that impacts the families that use their services because those families have to still pay to keep their spot but then also find additional services so that they can go to their employment it impacts our providers themselves because then they are shutting down their own um, livelihood and will they recover from it we do not know some do and over the pandemic many did not then if that provider shuts down, how many families are then displaced and maybe have to go to a provider that is not high quality. And so then we're talking about um, early childhood mental health and a child that maybe isn't getting the best quality of care and then has some long-term impacts later on in their life. So it's just this huge trickle effect that really does come down to Employment is a hard word to, for us to grasp, but I think when we think of it that way, it's so much more than just employment or a job. It really does affect mental health, early childhood, the social emotional development pieces, the workforce. Uh, and I don't know, Erin, if you want to piggyback on that, because I know you work directly with a lot of our providers. <coughs> I mean, it's been, it's been a hard couple of years down. And I mean, I run into teachers at these centers that don't view it as a real job. I'm going to get a real job eventually. <coughs> Excuse me, sorry. But I don't know. It's, you know, I wanted to ask Travis too, because Travis has a passion. He's been hanging in here for about three years now saying, I know there's something in, in this work that's important to the community. And I just want him to talk a little bit about why is this work important? I mean, like this childcare piece, for instance, you're making a commitment. Uh, why? What is it that is important to you beyond just the employment? <coughs> yeah, sure. I, mean, I kind of mentioned this last time, but and, and to the point of uh, <coughs> impact is to have many people involved on these topics because we all come at it from a different perspective. So, from early childhood development and education, I mean, for me, as speaking with my hat on working here, it's it's a it's a workforce issue because we have folks that. That either aren't showing up for shifts, or we had a gal who was a single mother, um, needed a job. She started working here about a month ago, and within a week, she quit because she had childcare issues. Her, her, her child had healthcare issues as well. And so, this person who I know needed a steady income and a job had to, that was the thing that at that time had to go because she needed to be with her child taking care of them because they didn't have a provider and then we needed to address these healthcare issues as well too. So I think, you know, just having being able to address that issue so that we can have a provider the workforce to care for the patients within the hospital and so that those the workers can also care for their families outside of work as well too. So it kind of all so so for me the child care piece is like I said it's it's my, my narrow view of it is, is more of a workforce related issue, but it's so much broader as all of you have kind of mentioned here today. And I, and that's where I get passionate about it. 
One of the things that um, Joanna has talked to us about, and I think you for the piece, but um, recently we've been using the, the lake, <laughs> the lake piece. Um, so we have fish, we have a lake, and fish are dying in the lake. Each of you have talked about your passion. You're pulling those fish out as fast as you can. You're treating them however you can treat them to, to get them to survive and thrive. And we just know that as long as we keep treating the fish, we're going to get ahead of this until we start looking at why are the fish getting sick, right? What's in the lake water? Is it the groundwater? Is it other pollutants? What is the other environment in our community that's causing those fish to, to be ill? So that's really what we're looking for. We're looking for, and Natty's now called it the bait. What's the bait? <laughs> I'm using that same analogy that brings people to the table to say yes. If we were working on that, I can see how it could impact the work I'm doing. I'm passionate about that because I can see myself in that work. I can see why I want to be at the table to learn more. I, I know what I can contribute to that to help grow thriving, successful, sustainable. Because ultimately, we can all keep coming back and talking about, you know, my link and the work that the service providers are doing, the good work that they're doing every day, which is absolutely necessary. But at some point, we have to get to that, that bottom section of this, which is, unfortunately, we do want to put some of you out of the job. But how do we, how do we get to that level of really providing a quality of, of change, you know, an improvement in attitudes and behavior, which makes people more sustainable and, and able to move past the, the need of some of those services or that level of services. You know, what's that next that next step um, that makes us more impactful? So I, I think my link, I haven't played with it a lot, but I'm sure like seeing that all centralized is great. But if I was in crisis and needing services, I wanna go to one place, one person, I need a job. I need housing, I need childcare, whatever it might be. I need food. I don't want to go here for that, here for that, here for that. <clears throat> can I take it just one further though to say that, you know, you can get <clears throat> emergency crisis services in lots of places, but wouldn't it be neat if we could get here before that crisis happens so that they only know? I have these services. I have these supports available to me. These people in my community are here for me if something comes up. And this is, I have a plan before mm -hmm. the meeting. It's kind of like that same river analogy. Mm -hmm. kind of mm -hmm. saving babies before the floating river. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. It's the total prevention piece we're looking for. I have a couple things. First, I'm a word person. So I feel like the common thread that people are talking about is support. And that's across all levels. We need support for our providers, the people who are providing services, the people who they're providing services to need support. So I think that's a real common thread. I also kind of have a question about as far as like jobs and employment. And I'm looking around at people who are in leadership Carney. I thought they said when um, the economic development person came that there are more jobs than we have available employees right now. That's correct. So yes. what do we want to do in that area? What what is what's the goal? Is it job training? Is it connecting people with those opportunities? Like what is because we have jobs. We have free staff and you just need to meet an issue. Yeah. I so I just think can be an issue too though. And I don't think it is. I, I think that's the one thing for us to have some continued conversation mm -hmm. about because I don't think we're wanting you to change what you're doing. We're wanting you to think about if I'm in the area of mental health, how does mental health impact employees and their ability to work in the workplace? And if we were all working on retaining people in the workplace or helping people to get trained for jobs, how would mental health play a role in that? Or if we were focusing in early childhood and ensuring that people um, had the available child care, how do we keep <coughs> focusing in that as well? Okay. So we're not asking you to change. It's just what is that one thread we are all working on that we can identify? We sure don't want to ask people to do more than what they're doing right now, right? Yeah. yeah. But and I know so we, so we are. Because like with this, I mean, like the whole mental health piece is exactly what everybody's dealing with, no matter what level, what system mm -hmm. you're in. I mean, we're investing so much time in just trying to take care of our employees. Even, I mean, so we're the the pond is getting deeper. Thank you. <laughs> 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 I mean, really, but what what 
bothers me, honestly, like your your comment, not you, but your comment about how they it's like there's a lack of pride in their job. And that really bothers me to hear that. I mean, because maybe that's what we're seeing in so many areas, you know, and maybe it is a support thing, maybe it's an education thing. Um, you know, like just briefly, but when we're talking about childcare, like my sister's had a first child and was born on the consent of heart disease issue and could not find help, could not find daycare in this community for like six months. And that was significant and And part of it was the partners, it's probably a comfortability level, it's probably a training situation, it's I mean, I always try to get the benefit of that, but I, I think some of that's training too. But so the other yeah. idea is that it's a is is it's a community Art. approach, and yeah. so it's not all of us doing something. What we're asking is how can we, you know, um, widen the to where the community. So I'm going to put Travis on the spot, but you know, as an employer of lots of uh, lots of employees. You know how important it is, is it that your employees have Okay, but it's not necessarily it's it's a it's hugely weightless, it's not necessarily accessible or expensive. It's very much more expensive. And, and that's your point but, it's, but it's, yeah, I would be attentive to your time. I think you yeah. just moved into solving issues, which and for those of you who aren't crazy and follow all the weather alerts, we're going to see your thunder storm warning. That's what I just saw. Uh, yeah. 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 so, so, yeah. so, so let's start off. Um, yeah. You guys provided us with really good information. Let me just say that up front. We were looking for this type of information. We want you to keep thinking about this. Navi and Travis and I will think about a few more questions. Kick them out via email for you to keep thinking about. I do have one question I want to ask all of you. Are you all willing to meet again to keep working on strategy? We're not solving problems today. We're working on what is the strategic plan for our community that we can put a bait out there in the community that everybody says, yes, I want to be a part of that. Yes, I see how I can be a part of that. And we'll keep working on what it is that brings us all together that we can work on. Well, one last thing, I just want to say, like when you started out with us about working and when you all of a sudden jump to jobs. And I have thought I heard somebody say, working is, we're talking about whatever kind of work you do, it might be volunteer work, it might be grandmother, it might be, you know, you know whatever. So I think that's another thing I just want to say, my dad is not always, you know, yeah. jobs. I mean, that is huge, but. It's a fun part, but not everybody can work. Right. Not everybody right. wants to work. But they often have purpose. And they it's part of that they 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 purpose. Right. So that's why it's, yeah. it's, a, it's a broader yeah. term. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I can see the application to like Travis's issue here, right? Or many large employers got to think about these problems in terms of workforce or recruitment and retention in our workforce. But our community is so much more than that. I think for your own help, though, I do yes. think we need to. Okay. Oh, right. We need to. We need to. We need to. We might just want to make sure we're all safe. Thank you for your time. We will be back in touch. I think we just need to start it on the next conversation. <laughs> it is pretty nasty out there. You are welcome to stay here for a little bit. You want to take this out and not run out your vehicle? I mean, it's. Well, I'm not running anywhere. I was about to ask who has an umbrella. Yeah, that don't matter. It's like an old man. Yeah, you can take the umbrella and just take it out and just walk away. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, you can take the umbrella and just take it out and just walk away.